I believe I have a word that's going to, should touch the heart of every person in this house today. Back at the beginning of the year in January, in fact, every January I go off for a week of fasting and prayer. A time that I isolate myself, a time that I seek God. I can't fast like I used to. I used to fast five and six days straight with just liquid. In the last several years, I've encountered diabetes, so I have to be more sensitive to that. You have to still partake of some things to keep the blood sugar level correct. How many of you know that we need to recognize sometimes the physical needs that we have and still at the same time work within the parameters of safety? How many of you know that's the right thing to do? When I encountered diabetes, I tried to still go into that weak fasting, and it created some real problems, so I don't fast that way anymore, but I fast the best I can with the conditions I'm working with, believe in God for my healing. Is everybody all right with that? Believe in God for our healing. See, I don't think we ought to pretend to be something or pretend to do something that we can't do. Amen. How many of you know God understands the circumstances of each individual? But when I was fasting in prayer in 2013, January this year, God spoke some things to me for this coming year. And through the year, we have addressed many of those issues. And I'm going to address the last one. Here it is, a, a month before the ending of the year. I'm going to address the last one because I'll be preparing to go off and fast in prayer in January to hear the voice of the Lord for 2014. Some of, the, some of these things you'll remember. The first thing that we received from the Lord was this was going to be the year of the family. How many of you see the banner up there, the year of the family? The year of the family. And we have put emphasis on the family. We put emphasis on marriage. We've done ministry on the family and on marriage. We've had some marriage counseling. We've had marriage seminar that was very successful. The year of the family. We encouraged the church to spend more time with the family because family is a vital part of the church. Strong family, strong church. A weak family, weak church. That's just how it is. Why is that? Because the church is made up of families. Amen? How many of you know God first ordained the family before he did the church? He said in Genesis, not good for man to be alone. He said for man to leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, that they too might be one flesh. Amen? And so we put emphasis on the family according to the word of God that we received in the beginning of the year. Number two, I'm just going to spend a few moments giving you a brief till I get to the last one, and I'm going to minister on that. Number two, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to us and said, it, are we really people of vision? I mean really people of vision. Do we have a vision in our heart for the things of God? Is the church see what God sees in the future? Are we winning souls of the kingdom? Are we touching lives? Are we, do we have a passion for God? Are we allowing the anointing of God to consume us? We need to understand that we need to have a vision. God is a God of vision. God is a God of purpose, amen? We have to have purpose. If we don't have purpose, we're not going anywhere, amen? If we don't have some purpose for our future, then uh, then. We're going to have the exact same results last year, next year, as we did this year. We must have vision. Amen. Just because we have a vision for God doesn't always mean uh, that every, uh, everyone's going to catch it. Because we have a vision for God doesn't mean everybody's going to, uh, going to go where we're going. But we must have something that God's speaking to, to us about. Prayer must be a vital part of our vision. We need to be able to saturate what God showed us with prayer and supplication. Amen? We learned in Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, uh, that even though the vision, write the vision down, put it on tablets, find those that would run with it. And even though it might tarry, it shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. You're sitting in the vision of God right now. You're sitting in the vision of God on the way to Bible school in 1980. 
God spoke to me about this ministry. And I pulled off the side of the road and wrote five pages down of what this ministry was going to be. And it was a vision. It was a word from the Lord. It was a revelation that I had from God. And then two years later, two years later, because there was things that had to be set in order. How many of you know, before we run with what God speaks to us about, many times you got to set some things in order. See, see, there were some things we had to do. First of all, I had to get out of debt. You don't go into ministry in a lot of debtedness and expect the ministry uh, to bail you out. Is anybody with me? You get out of debt. You clear yourself up. All those things you've encountered and those bills and stuff, you've got to get rid of them if you're going to come into ministry because most of the time ministry uh, doesn't encounter the same kind of income that maybe people have outside of ministry. Is anybody with me? So uh, God will help you fulfill the vision, but there are some things we must do. Write the vision down. Put it on tablets, Habakkuk said, and find those that would run. And, those that will, uh, and though it may not come to pass right away, though it might tarry, it shall come to pass. And you're sitting in a ministry that came to pass uh, whenever we believe God. Then the third thing that God spoke to us about is he said, I am a Lord that changes not. I'm a God that changes not. There's some incredible things going on in our society today that uh, you might not even realize. And it's all because we are a different culture. We're a different group of people now. We're all, uh, we're all high-techy people, you know, so it's okay. Uh, we're, uh, we're people that live different than they did in the Bible days. So, uh, so sin has a different uh, flavor. The sin has, ha- has a different uh, 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 a different responsibility than it was back then, according to the new people that are living today. Do you know there's a group of atheists that meet and have church? The atheist group. And they meet, and I don't know what they sing about, but they sing. I'm not sure what they preach about, but I guess they're, uh, they, you know, they build each other up with, with, with a, lot of, uh, a lot of positive thinking stuff. And their philosophy is they don't preach against sin because sin is different than it was in the Bible. Yeah, you can sin and do whatever you want, and it's okay because, after all, uh, because, uh, because they don't believe in what Jesus said. They don't believe in the Word of God. They don't believe in, 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 in the truth. So if you don't believe in the truth, then you can make up your own rules for life. That's the philosophy now, you know. You know, that comes around because we live in a generation of people that are so insensitive and have lost the respect for God. They've lost the fear of God, and they've lost the honor for who God really is. But I've got news for you. God spoke this to me, and he said, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that operated 2,000 years ago, the same God that operated 6,000 years ago, the same God uh, that walked the streets of, uh, uh, of Jerusalem in, in the form of Jesus Christ, that's the same God that's operating in our life today. And he doesn't change because of a different society. Then number four, the Spirit of the Lord spoke and said, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Church, let me tell you, if there was ever a time that the world is looking for a, a, a testimony that has some strength, if there's ever a time that the world is looking for some stability, it's in this time that we live today. And they overcame. This says in the book of Revelation, they, who? The, Christ, the body of Christ, the church, overcame. Overcame who? Overcame the enemy, the wicked one. How did they overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. First of all, we are under the blood. We're covenant people. Amen? We're, we're family, as we spoke about last week. We are family. We're connected to each other. We belong to one another. I, I'm connected to you, and you're connected to me. Uh, they overcame by the blood, the royal blood that runs through us. Uh, they overcame by that blood and by the fact that they have a testimony that said Jesus is Lord of their life, and nothing's going to undermine that. And then the third thing is, and they didn't, uh, they didn't regard their own life next to Jesus Christ. They was willing to die for the cause of Christ. Hallelujah. They overcame. And we need to recognize that's, uh, that's the thing that we have been doing this year. We've been walking in the anointing. Uh, we've been covered by the blood. And we know that we have a testimony that changes lives. 
Then the fifth thing that God spoke to me last January, I'm giving you a brief on these things because some of them maybe we let them slip. We have forgot. But we got to be reminded. I have to remind myself by pulling my notes out. And here's the fifth one. This is the year that not just the family but the body of Christ should pull together and spend time and encourage one another. We preached on that last Sunday morning. How important it is for us to recognize we are family. How important it is to recognize that there is royal blood that runs through us. Amen. We're just not strangers. We're just not uh, somebody that uh, came by and, and it really doesn't is, isn't have any value. Uh, but we who realize that we are family and we stick together and we hurt together and we weep together and we hug each other because we love one another. And then when it comes time uh, for the joy of the Lord to come, we can play together and we can have, have fun together because we are family. And we need each other. And those kind of things will, will, will give joy in our hearts. In fact, the scripture says uh, that laughter is good medicine. It's time. There's time that we need to have a good time. We need to have fun together. I hope you come out to the, uh, to the movie in the park because that's the time that we can interact. Time when we can, uh, we can be together and watch a, uh, watch a movie that I think everybody would enjoy and, and have fellowship because it's vitally important that we have that kind of connection. And then the last one, number six. Number six. Something has been lost. And this is what I wrote down in my notes. Something was lost. I wrote this down in January. Something has been lost in our society when it comes to honoring God. When it comes to the fear of the Lord. When it comes to respect and honor who God is. I've heard, uh, it's interesting that I've been listening to several preachers and I put this sermon together that last night and I heard several preachers this morning preaching the same thing. The same, the same theme uh, that the fear of the Lord. And, and, and one preacher said this morning uh, that someone asked him, what is wrong with our society today? Uh, what's wrong uh, w w with this nation? Where is it going? And here was the answer. The what's wrong with it is that we have, uh, we have neglected and we have lost the fear of God. The fear of God is not in the hearts of, uh, of, uh, of people today. Uh, the, they know God's there. Uh, they know he's a, he, he's, he, he's a need meter. If I need something, I'll cr crawl out to God, and he'll be like a Santa Claus and drop cookies down and give us a little blessing from time to time. Uh, but he's not, he, he's not uh, a God that's being revered. He's not a God that's being honored. He's not a God that we recognize he created the universe, and everything that we have is all in him. And he is, he is a God of more than enough, and he is a God that needs to be honored and, and respected. Respected. And, and when I talk about fear, I'm not talking about the fear of a lightning bolt coming down. I'm talking about great respect and honor for who he is. And for some reason, we've lost that, church. We've lost it. In fact, it says in Proverbs chapter 3, and I might repeat this a couple times in verse 9 through 10, it says uh, in Proverbs, it says, honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your crops. Uh, then your barns shall be filled and overflowing, and your vats will bring over, will, will uh, brim, the, the, your vats will, the brims will flow over with new wine. What, uh, what causes us to prosper? What causes us to have more than enough? Uh, what causes us to walk in victory? Honor the Lord. Then in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, He was he was faithful to the one who appointed him just as Moses was faithful to all of his house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses just as the builder of the house was greater honor than the house itself. Great honor should go to Jesus. Great honor should go to our God because of his great love for us. We, we need to honor him with all of our hearts. Can I hear an Amen. You see, the world has lost out on honoring God and some of the church has. I think some of the body of Christ has got so caught up in, 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 in popular, comfortable preaching. Uh, a lot of churches won't tell you uh, that sin is sin anymore. A lot of churches won't tell you 
that there is a, a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. A lot of churches uh, won't tell you uh, that, that, that repentance is still an important part of the Christian life. Uh, a lot of churches won't mention those things because they're motivational people. They want to keep you motivated and excited about you. You're going to be okay, and if you're okay, and I'm okay, and if everybody loves each other, we're all okay. And we and what's happening is uh, we need to understand that honoring God involves everything that the Word of God has to say. Amen. Jesus had been found worthy of greater honor than Moses. Then in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11, it says, You are worthy, of, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have been brought into pass because of your will. Then in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 13, it says, Then I heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing I, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praised and honor and glory and power forever and forever. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we need to honor the Lord with all of our hearts. We need to honor God. It's not just a casual relationship. He's there if I'm in trouble. And, 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 and we need to be careful not to bring him down. And I know that the scripture says in one place uh, that we can say, Dear Daddy, and he's Abba Father to us. And there needs to be that daddy-children relationship. But every one of my children, I've raised five children, every one of them had an honor and a respect and they knew who was in charge. Is anybody with me? They knew who had the final word. Uh, they knew who was going to be there to get them out of trouble. They knew who loved them enough that no matter what happened in their life, we was going to put our arms around them and love them and see them through whatever they're going through and we still do it today. Even though, even though they're grown and we have a, a great relationship as friends and as, as brothers and, 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 and we care for them, they still have that respect. Uh, my dad passed when he was 85 years old. He was my dad. Did I agree with everything? No. Uh, did, I always, uh, did I always act exactly right around him? No. Uh, but he was my father and I respected and honored him until the day that God took him home. And did I have some godly fear for him, with him? Yes. Did I always respect him even though I was an adult and he was my dad? And when he said something, I still listened. You see, that's the kind of respect and honor God needs from his, from his children today. That's the kind of honor God needs from us today. And we need to honor and respect him and esteem him highly. And there's many words uh, that tie in together on this word honor. When you see the word glorify, uh, that's also, uh, that, that's, that also ties in with the same word. When you see the word fear of the Lord, uh, that's also the same word as honor and glorify. When you see the word magnify, it's also, it also ties in with glorify and honor and fear of the Lord. Because all these words bring respect to him. And we need to understand that. Honor the Lord with your possessions in Proverbs 3, 9. We said that. And with the first fruits of all of your increase. So that your barns will be filled with plenty. And your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, hallelujah. A lot of Christians are struggling. And a lot of Christians want to know why they're having so much trouble. And they want to know why it seems like every day is a, is a hard struggle for them. And they're still believers. If they, go, if they die today, they're going to heaven. Uh, they belong to him. They're under the blood. Uh, they love Jesus. But let me tell you, uh, there's such a thing as honoring him and then walking in the victory and the favor of that honor. So your barns will be filled. And your vats will be overflowing. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 33 says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Do you know you have to, uh, you have to realize if you're going to honor somebody and you're going to put honor in someone's life, you have to be humble enough to do that? The reason why some folks don't honor anybody is because they're so prideful and caught up in themselves, they don't think they have to come down to anybody's level. Is anybody with me? But the fear of the Lord 
is the instruction of wisdom. And wisdom tells us, wisdom tells us that we have to humble ourselves. The scripture says, humble yourself, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, in due season, he will exalt you. And church, we are living in a society where, uh, where it's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about what I want to do. It's all about what, uh, what I like and about my time. And, 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 there's the, and we're losing the respect and the honor for God. If God tells us something, we ought to just love him enough to do it. If God tells us that we need to have a, a regular time of seeking him in prayer, we ought to just do it because we honor him enough. If he tells us that uh, knowing the word of God is going to give life and strength to us, and then we ought to honor him enough to have a, have a regular time that we meet him in the word of God. Thank you for that one, amen. Proverbs 18 and verse 12 says, Before destruction, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. Here's another way of putting it. Pride cometh before a fall. You see, when we get prideful and we get ourselves in the way and we can't be what God wants us to be and we won't honor him and respect him uh, with the kind of honor that the word of God tells us to honor, we're going to find ourselves not only being caught up in pride, but we're going to find ourselves falling and we're going to find ourselves uh, uh, having a problem in our life because we bypass the greatest thing and that's our relationship with him. Matthew 15 and verse 8 says, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me how many people do we have in the world today that they can give you good lip service you see we as believers have to be careful that we just don't learn how to say Christian stuff glory, glory to God hallelujah oh praise the Lord oh yes hallelujah hallelujah and I have all this Christian lingo down. Uh, but the thing is, I'm going out there and living just like a person does that don't know the Lord. And then I come back in and I can, I can identify with the world. I can talk their language. Or I can come in the church and talk the Christian language. How many of you know that's just lip service? And, and Jesus rebuked the people for it. He says, these people draw near to me with their mouth. Oh, they can talk the right language. They can have the lingo. Have they got Christianese down pretty good? Anybody with me? But they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's one thing I love about David. David made his mistakes. David had a, an, an affair with Bathsheba. Uh, David did all kinds of things that, uh, that you and I could point the figure at and say, boy, don't bring David in here. He don't, his life is messed up. I don't, I, 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 he can't pastor this church. But let me tell you one important thing about David. The Bible said over and over again, David was a man after God's heart. David had a heart after God. And because David had a heart after God, God showed David much grace. Because David had a heart after God, David was able to write many of the Psalms in, in, in the Psalms uh, that, that speak of his anointing and of his blessing and how he loved the Lord and how he can't do without him. Is anybody with me? Because he had a heart after God. But their heart was far from me, Jesus said. Now listen, we can say the words and we can act Christian and we can, uh, we can even, even interact with the Christian, but where's our heart? Our heart needs to be panting after him like the deer pants after the water brook, David said in the Psalms. Amen? We need, to, we need to cry out to the Lord and say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. I bless your holy name, forgetting none of your benefits. Because I got a heart after God. And, the, and, and we're finding ourselves in a dilemma today because uh, the world at large has lost complete respect and honor and for the fear of the Lord, and now they're just out there doing their own thing, and they have no relationship with God. Matthew 15 and verse 9 says, And in vain they worship me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men and not of God. Shame on them. If we say we're going to be a believer, we're going to have to walk in the doctrines of God. We're going to have to keep his commandments. We're going to say, Lord, I love you, and I'm willing to sacrifice whatever it takes to be in your presence. Can I hear an amen? 
John chapter 5 and verse 23 says that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So for the, so for the different religions that, that, that want to say uh, that, uh, that they love Jehovah God, but they don't, uh, they don't recognize who Jesus is, uh, they're, miss, they're missing the fact that Jesus said, if you're going to honor the Father, you've got to honor me. And he said, no man comes to the Father but through me. He said, I am the truth, the life, and the way. Hallelujah. When we honor him and we honor Jesus and we give honor to God, we're, we're recognizing divine order in the Godhead bodily. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify. If you look up this word glorify in your strongs, you'll find out it runs, it runs conclusive with honor. If you look up honor, it runs conclusive with fear. These words dovetail together. They all, uh, they all come into the same understanding. For you are brought with a price. Therefore glorify or honor God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. How many of you know you, that, you, that, that when you surrendered your life to the Lord, you became a GI? When I was in the army, I was a GI. Somebody say GI. Government inspector or government issue. Right? I almost got court-martialed back in 1963 uh, whenever President Kennedy was in, uh, was in Tampa and I, was, I, was, I stood honor guard for him. And before the honor guard, uh, we all went to the beach and I got sunburned so bad I couldn't hardly put on my starch uh, uniform. But you know what? I did it. You know why? Because I could have been court-martialed. You know why I could have got court-martialed for a sunburn? Because I was a GI, I was government issue. I, was court, I would have been court-martialed for destroying government property. Is anybody with me? So whenever you gave your life to Jesus, you put your hands in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus, you got covered by the blood. No longer do you belong to yourself, but now you're a GI, God's issue. Am I right? Now you are God's property. Amen? And now hey, you need to recognize that you just can't do whatever you want. Can you? Can you, still, can you still do some of the things you did in the world? Yeah, you can physically do it. But you don't have the right anymore. You know why? Because now you belong to God and you're, a, you're God's issue and you're God's property and he bought you with a price and he gave his blood for you and he died for you and now we belong to him and he deserves all the honor and glory and praise and worship that he can get from me because now I belong to him. Hallelujah. Are we still okay this morning? We haven't got too deep into this, have we? Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 3. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory and honor than Moses. We looked at that scripture before. Inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor uh, than the house. In other words, they was talking about how good Moses was because he was the builder of the house. But I want you to know Jesus was beyond the builder of the house. He's the creator of the universe. Then in 2 Peter in verse 1 and chapter 17 says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him. Listen, when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, he said, This is my beloved Son and who I am well pleased. God put his stamp of approval on Jesus. Listen, we need to honor him. We need to show honor and glory. When we worship God, we are showing honor to him. When we give praises to him, that's the way of saying, Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. You're worthy of all my praise. Revelation chapter 4, whenever the living creature gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. 
Revelations 4.11, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Revelations 5.11 says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels round the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 upon 10,000 and a thousands of thousands. And in verse 12 it says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings worthy is the lamb hallelujah saying amen blessings and glory and wisdom thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to the God forever and ever amen that's the kind of respect and honor God ought to get from us our heart ought to be full of thanksgiving Look at, look at Psalms 148 with me for a moment. See if this that doesn't tune you in uh, that, that God is bigger uh, than what you can imagine and he can accomplish all the things that you think uh, that, uh, that can be, needs to be done in your life. Psalms 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established uh, them forever and ever. He made a decree uh, which shouts out, pass the way. Uh, uh, praise the Lord from the earth. Uh, you great sea uh, creatures of all the depth Fire and hail, snow and clouds, a stormy winds have fulfilled his word, mountains and the hills, fruitful trees and the cedars, beasts and the cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, a king of the earth and all the people, a princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heavens and he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. That's us, hallelujah, of the children of Israel, uh, uh, the people near him. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Could we raise a praise for just a moment? Could we raise a praise? Could somebody give a praise to the King of glory, the creator of the universe, the Lord of all, the I am that I am, the God of more than enough, hallelujah, the one that sits on the throne, the lamb that was slain for the, for the world. Can we praise him for just a moment? Can we give glory to the almighty God, hallelujah? He's worthy. I happened to hear Creflo Dollar and he said a few things about honoring God. He said honor means to make heavy, to weigh down, to carry a weight. When you honor God, when you allow his word to carry so much weight in your life that nothing and no one can sway you away from the word of God. When you carry that heavy weight so heavy that this word of God becomes life to you. It becomes more important uh, than the uh, commands of the world. It becomes more important than the pressures of job. It becomes more important even than your relationship in marriage and family. And when it becomes more important than all these other things, we'll have proper balance. When it, the word of God has such a heavy weight on us that we're burdened when we don't spend time in it. And when we're heavy, and when we don't have the word of God uh, giving us balance that we need in our life, it has to become a heavy weight. Honoring means to have the heavy weight weight of the word in our life and it may change in us honor has to come from the heart that Jesus said not just lip service but from the heart and then uh, the psalmist said the first fruits offering is the substance that brings honor to God in Proverbs 3 and we read that the difference between the tithe and the first fruit is the tithe is always the tithe is always the tenth regardless of what conditions while the first fruits is always the first one and the best fruits that we have that we can give God the best that we have. When we come into the house of the Lord, give first fruits of worship and praise. We're giving the best that you got. 
when we want to bless somebody, we want somebody has a need, and we know that we have to help meet that need. Uh, don't give the leftovers that you got. Don't find the worst thing you got to bless somebody and say, well, I haven't used it for two years anyway. Uh, this old thing's been sitting on in my garage. I don't need it. Yeah, if this will help you, take it. And uh, no, they'll give the first fruits. Reach down to, 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 to a sacrifice and, and bless somebody with something that hey, you would almost hurt to give it away. And, and give it away because you know that you're giving first fruits to the God himself and honoring him. And watch God bless you back uh, with something more and greater than what you can ever give. Hallelujah. And then honor should regularly be shown to men and women of God. We need to recognize that God placed giftings in our life. First thing you give is the five-fold ministry gift. God placed into the church the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher for the perfecting of the saints so the saints can do the work of the ministry. Honor the giftings that we have. Honor the giftings that we have with each other. Honor the talents that's been given to us. Honor the gifts that we have. Sister Sue sang, sang a beautiful song up here that ministered to us uh, right prior to ministry. I honor her gifting. The musicians up here, uh, 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 Anne's sister was playing the sax with Henny. How beautiful it was to see the two of them playing their saxes together. I honor your gifting, my sister. I thank you for coming into the house and using the God-given gift that God has given you. I honor the gifts of the musicians and the singers and all that the ushers and the people that work with the children. I honor the giftings of those that are over there taking care of our children right now and our youth and the ministry that goes into them. Listen, we need to honor those. And when we do that, we're honoring God. And then in closing, worship requires obedience. Worship is a way to minister to the Lord and to glorify him. The wise men who were obedient to God when they came to worship Jesus. You remember the wise men. We read about them at Christmas time. Part of their worship included presenting Jesus with a gift. We need not, never hold back on gifting and bring God the gift necessary to make change in someone's life. Church, listen. We need to honor him. We need to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to fear the Lord because the Lord loves you and he honors you and he'll do anything that it takes in his power. And there's something lacking in our world today when it comes to honoring God. How do you know that, Pastor? By the way they make fun and make mock. By the way that sitcoms act and, and, and act like God's just uh, not important. Shame on people that will use that as a comedy act. And to make fun of the God that we serve and make fun of the, uh, of the anointing that we, uh, that we believe in and we have also precious to us. Amen. Honor the Lord with all of your heart. Honor the Lord with your giving. Honor the Lord with your talents. Honor the Lord uh, with the anointing that's in you. Honor the Lord with your family. When we really honor the Lord, our families are going to get stronger than ever. When we really honor the Lord, your life is going to be long. In fact, the scripture says that one of the last commandments, the Ten Commandments, is given to the children. And it said, honor your father and mother. Honor them. Because the, the, the attachment or the rider along with us, the only, only one of the commandments that's got an extra attachment to it. And here's the attachment, that you'll have long life. How many of you, how many of you really desire to live a long life? How many of you want to have a long life? Some of you can, like me, say, I've already had a long life. <laughs> you know why? You know why I believe why, uh, that, I, that, I've, uh, that I'm as healthy as I am and, I, and I've lived the, the, the victorious life that I have? One reason, because I've honored my mom and dad. Let me tell you another reason. Because I honor my heavenly father. I honor him. He's my heavenly father. If we should honor our father and mother, then we need to honor our heavenly father with great esteem and great honor and great respect. Am I right? Somebody with me on this? Amen. So if we're doing all these things, then we, start, we, start, we need to start teaching those around us how to honor God. 
Because he deserves every bit of honor that we can get. Every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment. Would you please pray for that person right next to you? I don't know them, Pastor. I don't know who they are. Pray for them anyway. Say, Lord, don't let one person in this house leave without knowing you to start with. Lord, don't let one person in this house leave with a heavy heart and a burden and feeling there's something lacking in their life because this is the place to get fulfillment right here. If you don't know Jesus as your own personal Savior, would you please, please, please give this pastor the privilege to pray with you, to invite you into your, to invite him into your heart? How do I know whether I'm saved or not, Pastor? By answering this question. God forbid, but if you would die tonight, if you would slip out in eternity tonight, do you know you have a home in heaven? Do you know your name's written in the Lamb's book of life? Do you remember a time that you put your hand in an nail-scarred hand of Jesus and made him Lord? If you can't say yes to those questions, maybe this is the day that you can let this pastor pray with you and bring you into the kingdom, give you that assurance. Maybe you used to serve God. Maybe you used to serve in the church. Maybe you were very active in the things of God, but somebody hurt you and somebody said something offended you and you got a little wounded and you said, I don't need all this, so you backed away problem is you've stepped out of the will of God in your life and you're not you've lost your joy over it what's wrong with saying Lord I'm coming home I'm coming home this morning I'm not going to let anything or anybody stand in my way someone said I'm not going to go to church down there because there's hypocrites down there at that church I would rather spend my life with a few hypocrites in the church and go to heaven than stay out of church and isolate and have my own little circle where I don't have any hypocrites and lose out on God's best. I would rather deal with a few hypocrites and say, Lord, maybe I can have a part in changing their lives. If you meet either one of those categories, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, or you need to make a decision to come back home, would you raise your hand right now and say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I want to be included in this prayer, Pastor. I, I want things to be right. Raise your hand right now. Don't worry about the people around you. Just you. It's between you and God. Is there one person who say, that's me, Pastor. Pray for me. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life tonight, this morning. I'm coming home. I want to get it right. Is there, a, is there one? Stand with me, if you will. Would the elders come to the altar, please? closing the service in just a few moments maybe there's somebody here that would say pastor I need prayer I need a healing in my body if there's any sick among you the Bible says if there's any sick among you call upon the elders of the church come and receive the prayer come and receive the healing maybe you're struggling in an area of your life let God heal that let God minister to you Maybe you're going through a personal battle in your life. I want you to come and have somebody agree with you that God's going to break that chain and you won't be, that battle will be over. Will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. If you have a need, maybe you haven't been honoring God exactly like you should. Maybe there's been some things that's You've let slip. You got caught up in a, the attitude of the world. You've been allowing some of the things of the world to cry crowd in. Jesus loves you so much. He said, if you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just. There he goes. Hallelujah. Let's minister to the Lord together. Oh, hallelujah. Don't forget to write some songs down and turn them into the ushers for tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you 
have a need, you come. Somebody be here to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Holy Ghost is moving in this place. If you have a need, come. We'll be dismissed in a moment or two, but this is God's chance to work and live. Thank you for your patience and allowing the Spirit of the Lord to move in this house. ask you this is there anybody here that's been waiting to be a part of this fellowship you want to join this church you haven't been sure how to do it but every other month we have a time where you can come and be part of this church here's the criteria first of all you need to be born again you need to have Jesus in your heart if you don't just come and ask Jesus in your heart and then come up here come on up here sweetie God bless you dear you want to join this you want to join this church is there anybody else say me too I want to be part of this fellowship I feel like this is where God wants me to be I'm going to get plugged in here's the criteria you got to be born again know Jesus as your savior number two be willing to come to six weeks of a Bible study new members class six weeks taught by myself in the conference room. God bless you, sweetheart. All right, girl. Good girl. Hallelujah. Anybody else that want to be part of this fellowship, I know this is where I belong. I've been traveling around, going from one church to the other, but I'm going to pull my camper up, jack it up, put jacks on it, pull the wheels off, and I'm here to stay. Amen. You decided this is where you're home's going to be and that means you're going to get involved you're not just going to be a pew warmer you're going to get plugged in you're going to do stuff we're going to serve we're going to find a place to work amen isn't that good look at that anybody else quickly quickly is there anybody else say that's me pastor me too okay i want to introduce these three beautiful ladies and then after what i do i'm going to ask you to come right down here and everybody's going to come up and love on you and tell you they appreciate you. Give me your name, sweetie. Elisria Hendricks. Elisria Hendricks. Elizabeth Hernandez. Wendy Harris. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for these beautiful ladies that says, this is where I'm going to serve. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're going to ask you to fill out a card and we're going to be able to get a hold of you. And when we get about 15 people, might be a might be a month or two we get about 15 people we'll have a new members class okay and it'll be on during the sunday school hour on sunday morning at 9 45 
If y'all would just come right down here. John, I think you need to come down here and stand with this lady. What do you think? I don't think she ought to be down here by herself. My goodness, that's not a good thing. Good, John. Good. <laughs> I think you need to be with her. All right. He needs to stand with his bride down here. Wow. John. John's been a member of this church since he was eight years old. Right, John? That's a good thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be dismissed in a minute. And some of you are going to come this way because I want you to come down and tell these folks how much you appreciate and being part of the family. Remember, we're family. Amen. We're the body of Christ members in particular. We're family. Royal blood runs through us. And I want you to come down and tell the members of the new members of the family here at Faith Outreach Center that you love them, they appreciate them. And if they need any kind of guidance, I'm expecting somebody to come and say, if I can do anything to help you grow, you can count on me. Give a phone number. Say, contact me if I can be part of your life. How many of you think that's the right thing to do? Amen. So there ought to be a little traffic coming this way when we dismiss. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray together. Everybody, how many of you received the word this morning? How many of you, how many of you have been reminded how great and mighty God is and how he needs to be honored and revered and to be feared with the fear of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this morning. We ask God you'll bring us back tonight. Lord, that we can enjoy your presence. We can minister on the theme, the anointing of God will come and receive a fresh anointing in our life. Lord, bless these that have, that have joined our fellowship. Bless them and anoint them. Bless every person that received ministry this morning. Most of all, God, bless your people as they go. Let us get some rest. Let's get a nap this afternoon. Let's have a good meal. And God, bring us back excited and refreshed, ready to serve you at 6 o'clock tonight. Bless your people in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Turn around and tell somebody they're special and you can be dismissed.